I've been into comedy, stand up comedy, making, making myself laugh, watching things that are funny, for like my entire life. I remember, forever. But the last 10 years, um, I've been saying, oh, I could do that, oh, I'm gonna do that, oh, I wanna be a stand up comedian. I remember the first few people that I really was into um, Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, Carlos Mencia. Robin Williams, Bill Cosby. Okay, those the, the those are some big names that I was that was into first. I'd watch over and over. I'd watch some of the stand up routines that they did, and it was funny. And and about ten years ago, ninety four, ninety five, um, I was working on a single line at work, and we'd talk, and I would tell stories. I told a story this one time. So convincing, and man, people laughing and dying, cracking up. They were just rolling. It it, it was about uh, being held up on a on a on a bus, not 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 with a gun, but by a homeless guy, um, masturbating. He was threatening us, and and they were just laughing. It was just a funny story. And this one lady, she goes, "Surely that didn't happen." I said, "It did. It's all true." But it didn't happen to me, it happened to Dave Chappelle. And she's like, Wow, you told us that yeah, you're you're a funny guy. You you've got stories. Why don't you come up with some of your own stuff? So that's when it started percolating in my head. I could do this and I I, I will do this. And I've had all these plans, I'm gonna get on stage and I wrote I'm gonna do stand comedy and do this and that and I, I haven't done it. So for years, it's been years, years I've been watching and thinking, man, I should do this, man. I make an excuse after excuse for not doing it. Well, you know, over the years, people, uh, they make me, make my head big. <laughs> Tell me you're funny. You know, I'm like, yeah, well, big head, you know. I My ego boosts. Well, there's this one guy, Jerry. Um, I, I was telling him a story, and see... I don't know. People say I'm funny just talking. I don't know. So I was just telling him a story. I don't even know what I was talking about now. But he was red faced, tears running. Out. He was talking. I was saying, Cherry, come on. He was laughing and rolling. And, and that's when I came to realize I'm really funny with special people. Uh, he, he, I volunteer alongside of his, his group and he's special needs. Um, the dude's like 43, probably outweighs me by 60 pounds. He's like 6'4". I mean, he's a big guy, but special needs. Um, I'm really popular with special needs people, I've noticed. Um, I, in my head, I, I'm thinking a different word, but it's politically incorrect, so I, I say special because I don't want to offend half the audience who might understand, especially guys who are bigger than me. I don't want to offend them because they might understand and want to come beat me up. That's that's why I, I don't I don't use certain words. I think, but this is this this would be whenever I get on stage, my first time doing stand up comedy ever in public, and it's it's different than than other public speaking. I mean, I, 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 I was a feeling preacher for a while at a church, and this is a lot different than that, because that, you tell stories and kind of pepper it with funny things, you know, salt and pepper here and there, because it's funny, you want people to kind of be involved, but, but that's secondary, of course, to your message. And when you do comedy, you have to be funny all the way through, and you don't, necessarily even have to have a message <laughs> sometimes most people don't really have a message a point they're not making a point they're just making people laugh um yeah but i've 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 really been researching this that and, and looking and, and sending emails to this place there's a, a new a comedy venue in downtown tulsa that um unlike other place I've looked at, it's not a bar. It's 
a stage with theater style seating. They do comedy and they do um, they do classes and s sketches and, and improv and and stand up. And um, so I I'm I'm seriously whew, getting closer to being seriously gonna go on stage. Um, so. My my excuse that I've said, oh, I don't like bars because they're smoky and I have asthma and I don't want to, uh, you know, I worry about my health and I may I make excuses. Well, that doesn't apply anymore. The 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 um, stage fright thing, I can overcome stage fright. I've done it in the past because, like I just said, I I, I used to fill in it as a preacher. It it was a small church, maybe um. 40 or 50 people, um, which I, I don't, I don't know how big the, um, the, the comedy, comedy parlor downtown is, um, so, that, but, but, I was over to, able to overcome stage fright to talking for people, but that, that was not 10 years ago, five, five or six years ago that, that I, I did that, so I haven't talked in front of a group of more than a few people since then, because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like groups, really. I mean, I don't talk in front of groups, um, hardly at all. But all I've got to do is put together a four-minute bit for open mic night, and I think I can, I can pin some bits together, like, like, like when I started this vlog. I mean, all I've got to do is hammer that down, and. Maybe not necessarily work on style because the the um, the stuttery rambly style thing that's kind of my own right now. I I don't think I don't think I'll ever be different. I mean, maybe it'd be more refined if I know exactly what I'm gonna say and stuff. But um, I, I like that that style of speaking because it's seems really natural um it's like bob newhart i've heard and actually I've, I've i've seen him not on not on stand up not on stage like that but on movies and stuff and he has a very very stuttery he tells it and he's very deadpan but he's he's hilarious i've seen in his roles i make he makes me laugh and that's that's all I want to do. I want to people laugh, and even if if I do it without a lot of energy, if I do it my normal deadpan telling talkingness, I don't know what the word is, but if I just ramble and that happens. Great. When I decide to do um, open mic, and I I want to know who in Tulsa I can count on being in the audience, because it would be really great if I had some friends in the audience to, like, help make my head big, boost my confidence or something, because that, that, that would be, be cool. So, um, message me if, if, if you think you could just commit to coming on a Sunday night when I open mic. I don't, I don't know the details, of course, and I, I don't, I might not do it this week, might not. Maybe, maybe maybe next next week's Father's Day. So maybe hey, man, happy Father's Day to me. I don't know. That's all I have to say about that.